All right, so chapter eight, a lot of things is happening on chapter eight too. You get to see the major character meeting up. The other major characters, they still believe Henry is the the best-selling author writer. So they want to have this manuscript that Martha was working on. Of course, Henry, he get he has to act, so he's like, okay, yeah, I'll do it. Don't worry about it. I I got this. You know, whatever. The next scene comes along, and this scene is、uh, a little bit crucial because the next. Major character is coming in, Jensen, or I should say, Officer Jensen, and Officer Jensen is kind of interrogating him and just asking him around, like, okay, so when was the last time you seen her? You know, all 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 that stuff,、um, all the good questions. And after Jensen left, I think Henry felt this urge of like, so disgusted of of himself that he just started acting berserk again. Like he literally just. Got a heavy mallet and smashed up the wall behind Martha's bed. That's what he did. So in a way, I think he can take the truth, or no, he can take the lie, but he can't really. Yeah, he's a normal human at, in the end. That's basically what it is. Chapter nine. Officer Jensen calls Henry Hayden, and he tells him. We found your wife, and chapter ten. Chapter ten. This is a mixture, but、uh, Gilsberg Fash comes in again, trying to be a little nosy, trying to figure out what's going on with Henry Hayden's life and what he can come out of it. So that's basically what he's trying to do, being a detective again. There was a chance where. Gisbert Fosh finds Henry Hayden and starts to follow him. It's probably not a good idea, but because he's not really—he's—I don't know. I feel like he's not really a good detective, but okay, whatever. So he follows Henry, and Henry—he sees him. He's not dumb. <laughs> he's not dumb. He sees him. He accelerates. And he makes this sharp turn, hides around these bushes. I guess hides around these、um, high bushes, and he waits because he knows. I, I think he knows that that road、um, is very narrow or steep. I don't know, but in the end, Gisbert crashes. He makes he gets into this major major accident where he's just bleeding and he can't speak. He can't see anything. It, it was really bad. And so Henry, he goes there and he helps him out. So nice. He helps him out of the car and he goes to the hospital. And afterwards, he goes to meet up with Officer Jensen to see his wife, or the dead body of his wife. Unfortunately, and fortunately, both at the same time, it was not his wife. It was some other woman. I guess so. In a way, it was a good news for Henry, but not really at the same time. I don't know. It's it's very confusing. But I don't know. I, I love that too. I love that that two opposite meaning, opposite ideas, feelings. So remember, guys. For I'm just only following and picking. Of Henry's trails, which is like the major parts of in this novel. I'm not gonna go and talk about Betty too much or any other people、um, unless they are associating with Henry in in that chapter in that scene. If you guys remember chapter ten, that's when Gisbert Bosch had a major accident. Not、uh, during that time, Henry he saw a, a black suitcase, and that black suitcase was. Gisper Fosh's, like all the documents about Henry Hayden. Henry Hayden didn't know what con- what was what contained in that black suitcase until he opened it up in chapter eleven. <laughs> And so now he knows that Gisper Fosh is like his Coco stalker. It's kind of weirding him out. So chapter twelve is where Betty meets up with Henry again to discuss about the incident about his wife. 
life about their relationship, especially when, if, since she's pregnant and all. However, it kind of it's kind of unfortunate for Betty just because like she played a lot right now. Like Henry is just telling her like, oh, I didn't go to the what did she say? I didn't go to the cliffs, and she's like, where did you go then? And I mean, this was actually true. I, I just didn't really say this at the beginning, but he actually did go and go to a theater and watched a Korean movie called Old Boy. I don't know why. I guess it's just to cover up his tracks. I don't know. Like I said, he's a very interesting person, criminal. So there you go. You don't really understand or know what goes around in a criminal's mind. I guess that's what makes it more interesting. But anyway, going going back to the story. So Betty, this whole time, she's just like panicking. It's just like, oh my god, like you know, you have an alibi. I don't. And that that's what basically Henry is hinting on too. It's like, okay, yeah, so I'm safe, but you're not. Uh, later, he's like, you know, and because she asks him like many times, like, what should I do? I mean, like, I don't know what to do. I don't. I mean, I'm not the criminal here. It's not like I killed her. And he's like, whatever you do, don't say anything, and especially. Don't say that that baby is mine. And that's literally what he said. And then she's just like, "Oh, I see where this is going. I see." Yeah, she wasn't happy. <laughs> Here he is. He's like eating dinner by himself while Betty, you know, she's she's crying. She's like not really.、Uh, she's nauseous. She goes straight to the bathroom, and when she passes by, she sees the secretary. And her name is Honor. I think it was Honor Ezen Ezenberg or something.、Uh, she's the secretary of the Moriani Publishing House. She sees all of this. She doesn't know what's going on, and they, she doesn't know what they talked about. But she does know that there's something there. In chapter thirteen, Henry visits Gisbert Fosh at the hospital after he wakes up. And Gishper Fosh, he's like, Gishper Fosh, he's like acting kind of stupid. He's like, oh,、uh, who are you? You're my savior.、Um, what's your name? And Henry's like, okay, so we're gonna play that game, okay. And I guess in a way, he's trying to show his stalker his good side. So what he did was after he left, he paid. Fosh's bills, and he had Fosh move to the upper floor of the hospital, so he had a good view. He had a, he basically had a great private room、uh, for himself in the hospital. So that was nice of him, I guess. In chapter fourteen, that's where Henry he sort of knows now. Okay, so this guy, Fosh. He is not a cop. He doesn't think he's a private detective either. He's just a normal man who's just basically stalking him. That's basically it. After visiting Gilbert, Fosh, Henry went to Gilbert's apartment, which is kind of weird to me. Like I'm just like, what? Why? <laughs> Um, I don't know. I just kind of, I, I just don't know why he wanted to go to his room. But it turns out that he wanted to just check out his room and see what he could find about Gilbert Fosh. In the long run, I think Henry just did not like Gilbert Fosh just going too deep into his history, and so he just kind of basically burned his whole apartment. In a way, just to kind of, sort of warn him as well, like say, like, hey, you gotta stop doing this or else. But I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know if that was really his intention. Chapter fifteen, the morning office. Everyone knows about her pregnancy, <laughs> including Claus. And as you guys know, Claus, he really liked. Betty, and he also wanted to propose to her, but after finding out that she was pregnant, she was like, "Okay, maybe, maybe she already has someone, and you know, she's just not for me." 
Betty believes that Honor spoke to her gynecologist and told her to send a CD with an ultrasound image of the baby to the office. That's really messed up, to be very honest. That means Betty is not able to get a way out, which was to, which was actually, I think it was her second option, um, but it was to marry Claus. And I mean, Claus is supposed to be, supposedly it was, is a wealthy man as well. So yeah, she, she was thinking about it, but after that, that opportunity went out of the window. Chapter 16, very, very short chapter as well. Henry meets up with Obradin. I don't think I'm saying that right. Obradin, Obradin. And they're making a conversation, and in a way, you can kind of tell that there's an indirect contract going around here. Especially at the very, very end. Um, where Henry is telling Obradin, Obradin that if he accomplishes this uh, this case that I'm giving you, I will literally give you the bank. Henry reached into his pocket and took out a key. This opens my safe. If you ever fall on hard times, if you ever at your wit's end, then use it. You'll find the bank on page 363 of Frank Ellis. Farewell, my friend. Henry, I mean, he's he's basically hinting to Oberdin that he's leaving. He's going to get out of there. But before he does, he's going to do one last thing, which is to do something for him. And I'm going to tell you in the next chapter. Uh. <laughs> 